Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. And in this context, in the current module, we are discussing about the different approaches or different way to design the inhibitor for the enzyme. In this context, if you recall, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about how you can be able to identify the active site within the enzyme structures and how you can be able to use the biochemical approaches, uh, bioinformatics approaches or the structural approaches to identify the active site. And subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the traditional approach, how you can be able to use the traditional approach, what are the difference between the traditional as well as the uh, computational approaches. And uh, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the different types of computational approaches, what you can actually be able to use to design the inhibitor against the enzyme. So first, we'll discuss about the ligand based approach. So uh, before discussing about the uh, these approaches, let's see what are different options available for the different types of inhibitor designing. So what you have is you have the receptor based uh, approaches, you have the pharmacophoric based uh, approaches, you have the computer based approach, you have the molecular graphics, you have a pattern recognition and the receptor fit. So many of these approaches one can use depending upon the resources and as well as the expertise. So let's start first with the pharmacophore based approach. So pharmacophore based uh, inhibitor design. So in this particular case, what you have to do is you have to take the two different types of molecule, one which is active and one which is inactive. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to examine the features of the inactive molecules and as well as the features of the active molecule. So for example, in this case, right, you have a reference molecule and you have the actual molecules. Then you generate a hypothesis about what chemical groups on the ligands are necessary for the biological function, what chemical groups suppresses the biological function and so on. And then you generate the new ligand which have the same necessary groups in the same 3D locations or you mimic the active groups. So you see these are the this is the reference group and this is the target uh, ligands what you want to design and uh, that's how you can be able to do you, are, you have to keep the active groups intact and you actually have to change the other groups and that's how you can be able to design the new molecules. The same way people have also developed that is some of these kind of molecules. So we have taken the uh, examples from the natural sources, we have taken the examples from the biology and that's how you can be able to do the uh, selection of the different types of molecules. So you can actually be have the you know base molecule for example you will say that okay these are the functional groups which are important right. So you will keep these intact and instead of taking this you can actually be able to do like designing like this okay. So you can actually be able to design the molecule like this okay. So in that case you have designed that you have prepared the new molecules and you can be able to use that for some more applications. So these will actually ensure that it will go and hit the active side whereas these groups you can actually be able to put as per the your additional requirements and that's how you can be able to use the pharmacophoric based approach to design the molecules. Now the second approach is the receptor based inhibitor design. So in the receptor, receptor based inhibitor design you are actually going to examine the 3D structure of the biological target which means you are going to examine the enzyme structures or if you are lucky and you are actually going to have the enzyme which is uh, already complex with the inhibitor then, then you, your task is actually going to be facilitated even faster right. So if you have a such kind of complex available then you are actually going to see what are the requirements of the inhibitor okay and what are the features what are present in the enzyme to facilitate that and that looking at that looking for the specific chemical group that could be a part of an attractive interaction between the target protein and the inhibitor then you can actually be able to keep those interactions intact. So taking the interaction into account 
you will take you will keep the interaction intact but you will change the molecules for example you have a uh, active site like this right so uh, you can actually be able to have the inhibitor and you imagine that you have a group here you have a group here you have a group here right so now you cannot change the enzyme because these groups are intact right what you can do is you can actually be able to change the groups onto this right and you can actually be put additional groups based on the your requirements so you can design a drug molecule that will have the multiple side of the complementary interaction with the biological targets and what is the advantage of this group is that you can actually be able to see that how the design molecule is fitting into the active site and this is the one of the molecule right so what you can do is you can take the design molecule you can put it into the active site and you can see whether it is mapping all the interactions what are crucial for the enzyme to interact with the inhibitor or not and taking that into account you can be able to ensure your or you may be more uh, confident that this inhibitor is actually going to block the activity of this particular enzyme so in the receptor based in other design you can actually have the you know the structure based drug design method is about the building ligand which is usually referred as the receptor based drug design so in this case the ligand molecules are built up within the constraint of the binding pocket by assembling the small pieces in a stepwise manner these pieces can be either individual atom or the molecular fragments the key advantage of such a method is that no, novel structure not containing any database can be suggested so what it says is that suppose this is the active site and you know that these are the some of the groups what are present right so what you can do is you can start very crude you can start with a very crude molecule and then you can actually be start building the molecule based on that right so that you can be able to ensure the interaction of these groups with this particular new design molecule and that's why you can actually have the iterative molecules iterative de designing of the molecules one other example is that uh, where uh, we have done this okay so in this what you are going to do is you are first going to identify the active site and So first you will identify the active site, okay? So for example, you have, this is the active site, what you have designed, okay? So this is the active site, what you found, and you found that there are some groups, some functional groups what are present in this. So these functional groups are very crucial for the receptor to bind, right? For example, these are the groups. Now, what you're going to do is, you're going to prepare a ligand fragments, okay? So you're going to put a ligand fragment like this, okay? Now, you are going to test whether this particular ligand fragment is fitting into this or not, right? If not, then you are actually going to design another ligand, right? So, you are going to say, ensure first that the three-dimensionally the ligand is fitting into this active site or not, right? So, you will fit like this. Now, if it is fits into the structure receptor, then you are actually being, you know, in the right path. If it is not, then you are actually going to change the fragments, okay? And uh, we grow that, right? So now, once the growth is over and you could have been able to get nice fitting, then what you can do is you can just put the functional groups onto this particular growing chain in such a way that it is actually going to ensure the molecular interactions. And if that happens, then you are actually going to get the new molecule or the new inhibitors. This is exactly what we have also done in our laboratory. And if you want to do this, and you are actually going to first identify the binding pocket. So what we did is we this is another this is the same example of AFD 957W, right? So what we did is we have identified the binding pockets. So you'll see uh, we have identified the 10 binding pockets. And I'm going to show you one example where this is the binding pocket. So binding pocket one and two, which is actually present within the ATP binding pocket, we have chosen and then we have started designing the inhibitors. So what we did is we started with a very crude molecule, right? You see this, right? And then we started filling the balls, okay? So you can actually be able to fill the balls so that you can actually be able to know what are the 3D conformations required, okay? 
Now, you see this, right? So, if I start filling the three dimensional structure or three dimensional balls into this particular structure, I will be able to know what is the 3D conformation required to bind this. And then you will see this is uh, one group, what is present here, you have upon, uh, you know, the one group here and so on. So, taking these into groups into the account and you see this is a group also here present. So, you know, first I will get the three dimensional conformations and then I will put all these functional groups and that's how I am going to design the new inhibitor which will fit into this particular active site involving these two pockets. Now, let's take an another case study where we are actually going to show you how you can be able to design the inhibitors. So, this is an example of the molecule which is called as the ICAM1. Okay, so ICAM1 is a molecule which is responsible for the binding of the different types of ligands and it is present on to the uh, so many of the proteins but it also present on the endothelial cells and many of you if you don't know about endothelial cells endothelial cells are the cells which are actually making our blood vessels okay so our blood vessels are made up of, of the endothelial cells now you see the icam1 icam1 has uh, three region one is this region which is for the virus then you have this region, see this small portion, this is the region which from which it is actually binding the lymphocytes because this is the lymphocyte binding factor, okay. And then this blue region what you see is actually for the malaria parasite. Here I am showing the same in terms of the positive and negative charges. So, this is the topology of the different types of charges, right. So, and what you see this black color thread is actually a peptide which is called as the inhibitory peptide and this peptide is known to disrupt the interaction of the ICAM1 with the LFA1, okay. So, what we want is we want to modify this in such a way that it is actually going to go and bind here in such a way that it is actually going to disrupt the interaction of the malaria parasite with the ICAM1 molecule. Because when the malaria parasite interact with the ICAM1, it actually it introduces the cytoadherence and that is how it is responsible for the development of cerebral malaria. First thing what we did is we did the interaction analysis. So, this is the IV peptide and what we have identified, we have identified the crucial residues which are responsible for the interactions and considering these interactions, what we did is we started modifying the fragments, okay. So remember that when we were talking about the receptor uh, based uh, inhibitor design, we started de designing the fragments, okay. So, what we did is we did the uh, wild type sub molecule which is the IV peptide, right. And then we started modifying the fragment. So, we first started making the mutations into the main chain, right. So, we did the single substitutions, double substitutions, triple substitutions. Single substitution means we have changed the amino acid, one amino acid at a time. Double substitution means we change the two amino acids at a time. And triple substitution means we have changed three amino acids in the sequence at a same time, okay. And what we found is that its binding uh, into the cavity is changing when we are doing this. And then we also did the quadra and truncated and all that. After that, since this is a 21 amino acid long peptide, we started producing the truncations, okay. And we started putting the truncation so that we are going to have the smaller peptide and that smaller peptide is also going to have the same efficiency as this particular large peptide. Because you know that the large peptide does not get into the target site and it will actually going to have the more non-specific interaction. And then we also did the optimization of the smaller peptide and ultimately we got the best peptide which is the this peptide, okay. And you will see this is also binding into the active site. Now, if you see how it is binding, so when we are doing the substitution onto the peptide, 
it is actually you know rotating and binding and changing its conformation binding site and all that and so when we did the uh, you know the double mutated substitutions triple substitutions and ultimately we did the quadrat substitutions and that's how it is actually got changed completely and it's actually started mapping this particular site and that's how it is actually going to disrupt the interaction with the plasmodium falciparum so in taking these into the account we have designed the new molecule and what we have found is that the, this new molecule which is the ib327 is as efficient as the ib peptide this is the ib peptide this is a smaller peptide this is a larger peptide and both are actually having the very very strong interaction with the all the residues what we have identified that for used for the interactions so this is the receptor based uh, studies what you can actually be able to perform to design the new inhibitors then let's go move on to the next molecule and the next molecule is the ligand based inhibitor design so the first category is about finding ligand for a given receptor which is usually referred as the database searching so ligand based inhibitor design means you are actually going to search the database taking this ligand into account okay you know that this ligand actually binds to that particular enzyme okay or it is actually an inhibitor for this particular ligand so now you use, use this and you identify the another molecule into the database so in this case a large number of potential ligand molecules are screened to find those fitting the binding pocket of the receptor this method is usually referred as the ligand bit inhibitor design the key advantage of the database searching is that it saves the synthetic efforts to obtain the new lead molecule which means it actually does not it is uh, it reduces the efforts to synthesize these molecules and then you test them into the enzyme assay and all that because if this ligand is good and if you search into the database and could found the alternate molecule fitting uh, exhibiting the different uh, similar kind of properties this means that also is also going to be an inhibitor now let's see another molecule or another story or case study how you can be able to use this to design the uh, use the ligand ligand based approach okay so this is another protein uh, but we were working in our laboratory which is called as the pfi 1625c and this is a hypothetical protein and it actually does not know anything about this class of enzyme and all that so what we did is we did the homology modeling and we prepared a homology model and based on this homology model what we found is that it also has a protein bound zinc which means one information is clear that it is a metallo protein okay so it has a metallo enzyme right because it has a metal right then it also has the some of these key residues and considering these key residues and the three dimensional structure of the active site we have found is that it is actually a protease and when we know that the protease then we also identified the in the, the peptide which actually fits into this particular active site and how this peptide can be cleaved so considering these peptide sequence which is was you know starting from the very crude sequence we have identified the refined sequence which will fit into this so we have done the similar kind of approach we have done the substitutions and all that and what we found is that these are the amino acid sequences which fit into the active site very nicely and uh, these are the sequence these are the peptide final peptide which fit into the active site and can be actually be able to cleat uh, apart from that uh, there was another enzyme which is uh, called as the pfrio2 kinase and that also can be used for the ligand based approach so like pfri2 kinase has a dna binding cleft it also has a substrate binding cleft and it also has the atp binding cleft right so this is a substrate binding cleft and this is the atp binding cleft taking these into the account what we have done is we have taken the ligand and we have searched different types of molecule into the database so these are the different molecule what are present in the database we docked all these molecules to ensure that they are binding into the ATP binding pocket. And then we have selected some of these molecules like the this molecule, this molecule and this molecule. And they, you'll see that they are very nicely fitting into the active site. This means they are the potential molecules, right? 
and then this is the best molecule what we have identified right from the database and we have studied how what will be the drug like properties of this enzyme so we have found that the, the this molecule is following the lipinski rules and all the other kinds of parameters and then we what we did is we have actually be able to use that molecule to identify the similar kinds of drugs what are present into the uh, database so these are the drugs what are present okay and uh, these could be uh, alternative to these compounds for testing their inhibitory activities and that's how we have assigned the new role of the older drugs which means we have said that these are the drugs which are actually going to work instead of those molecules and they can be used in the clinics so this is all about the uh, some of the more inhibitor designing approach so what we have discussed we have discussed the ligand based approach and we also discussed about the receptor based approach in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the computer aided inhibitor design and we are also going to show you a demo about how you can be able to use the different types of tools to design the inhibitors so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here thank you mm -hmm.